Today, I'm down here at John Koo Fleitner's Gallery of Classic and Pristine Cars just outside of Salem, Ohio with this gorgeous 1960 Ford Thunderbird. But before we take the tour, a bit of a history lesson slash overview of the Ford Thunderbird. The original Ford Thunderbird came out in 1955 and was made in response to the Chevy Corvette, which was considered a sports car. Ford produced the Thunderbird and accidentally made a totally new market segment called the personal luxury car. The 1955 through 1957 models were considered a success, but Robert McNamara, yeah, that Robert McNamara, he was the first Ford Motor Company president outside the Ford family. He became president in 1960, but it was short-lived because after the U.S. election in 1960, JFK tapped him to be the Secretary of State. Anyway, McNamara thought that there was still room for improvement in the overall sales volume with the Thunderbird. Market research suggested that if Thunderbird offered a rear seat, it would appeal to more buyers, especially those with families. There were two design contenders in the running. This design was designed by Joe Orris, and the other design was Elwood Engel. Elwood Engel's design would live on as the 1961 Lincoln Continental. This Thunderbird is oftentimes referred to as the square bird or the big bird because it's a lot bigger than the 55, 56, and 57 models. It's also worth mentioning that this is the same body style. It's also the last year, same body style from 50, 1958, 59, and this one's 1960. Fun fact, this is a unibody construction car. It weighs 3,957 pounds. That's almost two tons. Two tons being 4,000 pounds, which is incredible. It's not as heavy as the bullet bird that comes after this, but to think that this is a unibody construction and it is that heavy is just incredible. 1960 was a sales figure record for Ford. They sold 92,843 of these, of which... 11,860 were convertibles. They had a Goldeen edition that had offered a rare sunshine roof option. They produced 2,530 of those. And apparently, there was two models that were made from stainless steel, which cost $35,000 in 1960, which is equivalent to $306,181 now. Both cars survive to this day. One of them is at the Heinz History Center in Pittsburgh, which is right down the street from me, so I have to check that out. Two engines were available for the year 1960, the 352 FEV8. It was a Y-block design. It was called a Y-block because the cylinder block casting extended below the center of the crankshaft center line. Blocks were cast in two major groups, the top oiler and the side oiler. Top oiler sent oil to the top center first. Side oiler sent along a passage located on the lower side of the block first. The other engine was a 430 MEL engine. MEL stood for Mercury Edsel Lincoln. It was produced from 1958 to 1965 with various different configurations like cubic inch displacements. In 1960, it produced between 315 horsepower and 350 horsepower. All male engines had a wedge-shaped combustion chamber. Okay, on to the options, but before we get to the options, let's talk about how much the actual Thunderbird cost in 1960. So they were offered in two different uh, body configurations, the uh, hardtop, the convertible. The hardtop was $3,755, according to NADA Classic Car Values, that's where I got that number from. If you adjust it for the conversion rate or inflation or whatever, $1 in 2022 is equal to $9.58 in 1960 dollars. So that would equate out to be $35,972.90. The convertible is $4,222. Adjusted or converted was $40,446.76. Let's talk about some of these options that you could get. I'm not gonna go through every individual options so you could feel free to pause this and look at the options there's a lot of different options that you could get in 1960 for the thunderbird a new option for 1960 was the passenger four-way power seat which was 92 dollars 10 cents adjusted 882 dollars and 31 cents sliding roof was 212 dollars 40 cents which adjusted 
$2,034.79. The 430 engine, which produced up to 350 horsepower. I say up to because I've, I've saw conflicting information. Some websites said that it only produced 315 horsepower, whereas the, but that was a $177 option, which would have been $1,695.66. So it would have been cheaper to get the 350 horsepower engine versus the sliding roof, which is interesting in my opinion. All right, getting inside the 60T Bird. As we open the door, just check out this interior. You totally understand why they called this the personal luxury car. It looks amazing in here. Okay, let's walk through this dashboard. To the left, there's fuel and temperature. In the center, Speedo. Notice at the end of the Speedo needle what, what design that looks like. It's very interesting Speedo needle design. It almost looks like an arrow. Inside the Speedo is also your odometer. The odometer usually lives in the Speedo gauge. Just to the right of that is the clock. There are two knobs right below the clock. One is for a lighter. That's the one on the right hand side. The one on the left is for your wipers. Moving back to the left side, right underneath the temperature gauge, there your ignition switch sits there, as well as the light switch for the headlights. The high beam switch is on the floor, where it should be. Moving right, located in the center, Ford's radio with twin transistors. Ford claimed better sound quality with this radio unit. Tell me in the comment section below if this was the radio to have back in the day. Moving just below that, the climate control system. I just wanna take a minute and show you, just look at all the aluminum trim. I think it's aluminum trim. If I'm wrong, comment in the comment section below and correct me, please. But it's just, it's all really nice. It's really nice touch. It makes it look really elegant in here. Just check out the center console. There's two ashtrays in here, one in the front. The other ashtray is located at the tail end of the center console. Those buttons that you see right there are for the electric windows, which is a really cool feature to have. Late 50s, early 60s Ford products had hood releases because the hood opened a very unique way. So after popping the hood, it comes up. It's like it's almost like a clamshell style. There is a lever inside here that hooks onto almost like the inside fender. Just uh, release that and you can open up the hood to reveal this marvelous engine. And just look at how far the hood goes up. It almost goes straight up to allow you plenty of access if you have to work on this thing. This has power brakes. This is the power brake booster and the master cylinder. Also take note, the engine isn't like right up against the firewall like it usually is. So check that out. Check out how much space you have in between. Everything is so easily accessible. Here's a picture of what the keys look like for the 1960 T-Bird. I show these because, you know, it's always cool to see what they look like. Okay, one more section to go over before we talk about the pros and cons to this vehicle. Just check out this back end styling. Look at this grill. It's it's a faux grill. It's, it's totally fake, but it looks super cool. It's definitely jet age. Definitely has that sort of styling appeal. It also has like an indentation where the license plate is. So there's like two banks of lights. It's really cool. There's also these little fins. And also check out how this trunk opens. Okay, on to the pros and cons. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I'm getting all the pros and cons from a book that I got when I was a kid. The book is called The Complete Book of Collectible Cars. It's blue chip, I'm using air quotes, auto investments of 70 years from 1930 to 2000. I need to get an updated version, but this one works for now. Um, the positives, the pros, luxurious, reasonably compact, strong club support, nice looks, personal luxury, pathfinder, great highway cruiser, milestone car. Now the cons, rusts easily, heavy, thirsty, variable construction quality, clumsy handling. So if you guys have one of these in the comment section below, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? Please share your stories. I love reading stories that you guys have about cars that you've owned in the past. It, it really brings a smile to my face. It really brightens up my day. Please like, share, subscribe this channel. I'm trying to make this the go-to car, classic car channel. Especially, there's going to be a lot of weird stuff coming up. And that's what does really well on this channel is the weird and unusual stuff. The stuff that you don't see every day. 
please share the channel so we can keep growing it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloo!